full screen tayo and earphones on. Yung libro na dinidiscuss natin, which my father and I made, is classroom tested for many decades already. My father started teaching and he has been teaching for for about 40 years now. So, mahigit 30 years, mag for 40 years na. Kaya yung materials na ginagamit natin, these are classroom tested, well explained. At makikita mo naman, hopefully magkaroon ka ng kopya nitong libro. Using the T-accounts, this could further be explained sa same pa rin, kanina. Since under the asset method, sabi natin dito, expense method naman yung kabila, advance payment on October 1, 2020 has originally been recorded as an asset. The entire 120 is an asset. Correct. Yung prepaid rent is an asset. Ang pangalan ng T-account ay prepaid rent. 120 sabi mo noong October 1. To leave this unadjusted until December 31, the end of the accounting period, means to not recognize the expired portion. Sakto! Correct yung explanation. Which will, eh, syempre, ako nag-explain ito eh. Ako nagsalat ng libro. Which will mistake both the assets and the expenses. Tama yun. Therefore, as shown, 9 out of 12 or 90,000 is the correct amount of the asset. Since this is the unexpired portion and that 3 over 12 has expired, thus, gagawa ka ng T-account, pangalan, prepaid rent. Initially, ni-record mo 120 yung prepaid rent. Na-determine natin that the correct asset is 90. So, to make the 120 90, babawasan mo ng 30. Paano mo bawasan ng 30? Iki-credit mo. Tama? Debit portion, left. Credit portion, the right side. Iki-credit mo. Ayun no? Prepaid rent. Nakakredit daw. Kaya nakakredit siya dito. Sana naiintindihan mo ako. Very crucial ito. Hinihimay-himay natin para naman, di ba, beneficial yung time mo sa panunood. Prepaid rent. Nakakredit to dito sa credit. E di credit mo dito sa yung adjusting journal entry. Ito na kasing adjusting journal entry mo. Prepaid rent nakakredit. So, i-credit mo. E, anong partner nun? E di naturalmente, wala namang ibang partner yan kundi rent expense. Amount 30. Kung anong adjustment amount mo. Same naman dito. The other side of the coin. Yun namang expense method. Same lang sinasabi. Noong October 1, the record mo siya as expense. So sabi mo, rent expense 120. There's nothing wrong with that. that. But to leave this unadjusted until the end of the accounting period, uh, you're not recognizing the asset portion. Okay? Totoo ba na ang rent expense mo noong December 31 ay 120? Hindi. 30 lang. So to make the 120 30, kailangan mong bawasan dagdagan. Natural bawasan. Nang magkano? 90. Paano mo bawasan ang rent expense? Dedebitan mo, kredetan mo. Aba, pag dinebit mo yun, di mas lalong nadagdagan because rent expense as a normal debit balance. So, ikikredit mo siya ng 90. Ayan o, nakakredit daw yung rent expense. Gumawa ka ng T-account eh. Ito yung T-account mo. Ang pangalan ng T-account mo, rent expense. Kasi expense method. Kung asset method, prepaid rent. That is the asset account. Alright? So, nakakredit daw yung rent expense. Adi, credit mo, 90,000. Anong partner ng rent expense? Eh, wala nang iba yung prepaid rent 90,000 we are done with A1, 2, and 3 A4 naman tayo this is pre-collection collection of income in advance under A4 tulad ng A3 kanina may dalawa din tayong method you have your liability method and the income method. So, just the same. Same mechanics tulad ng kanina. An income collected in advance is actually a liability at the date of collection. This is technically called an earned income. Correct. Kinolekta mo na, hindi mo pa napagsisilbihan eh. So, an earned income yon, Liability. However, the transaction can be recorded into two different methods, namely, liability method, expense method. Under the liability method, the total amount of cash received in advance is credited to a liability account. This method is theoretically the sound method considering that at the point of collection, no portion of the amount had yet been earned. Correct yun. However, as days pass, the unearned income will gradu gradually be earned. So, bago natin ulit basahin yung income method, tignan na natin kaagad yung example for 
reliability method. Illustration. On August 1, 2020, AB Realty collected one-year rental from tenant, 180,000 that covers the period August 1, 2020 to July 31, 2021, one year. Under the liability method, the following entry was made on August 1. Tinanggap yung pera, debit cash, 1. 80, Under the liability method, ang sabi nung nag-record, aba, di pa namin na pagsisilbihan to. Liability pa ito. Unearned rent. Unearned rent is a liability account. Again, this journal entry is correct as of August 1. Walang mali dyan. So, balit, again, kung hanggang December 31, 2020, hahayaan mo na ganyan yan at naka-reflect ng unearned ay 180,000, mamamali ka. That's why, an adjusting journal entry is necessary at the end of the accounting period. Aning adjusting entry na yun? E tanong ko sa'yo, tama ba na hanggang December 31, 180 pa rin yung unearned? Mali na. Kasi from August, September, October, November, December, 5 months has already been earned. 5 out of 12 ay na-earn mo na. So, 5 over 12 times 180,000 is 75,000. That is the earned of the income portion already. And the remaining 7 out of 12 remains to be an earned of liability. That is 105,000. So, kung hahayaan mo yung 180 hanggang December 31 na naka-credit sa unearned rent, inaccurate yung reporting na mangyayari. So, how do we correct this? Tulad ng papakita natin uli kanina, gawa ka ng T-account. Under the liability method, ang pangalan ng T-account ay unearned rent. Initially, it was credited daw, credited, so credit portion at 180. Ngayon, na-determine natin that 5 out of 12, out of the whole 180,000, 5 out of 12 has already been earned. 75,000. 7 out of 12 remains to be unearned. 105,000. So, tanong ko sa'yo, yung unearned rent, saan ka? Doon na ba siya sa? Very obvious naman eh. Earned ito. Ito yung unearned. O mamili ka. Unearned rent. Yung earned o unearned. Eh, di natural dito ka. Tama? Ang correct, balance daw nung unearned, e eh, 105. O, eh, di 105 dito. Para gawin mo 105, yung 180, ano gagawin mo? Krekredetan mo. E, eh, mali. Mas dinagdagan mo. Tama? Para bawasan ng liability, i-debit mo. Kasi ang normal balance ng liability, credit. So, babawasan mo siya ng magkano? 75. Naka-debit, oh. Debit. Portion. Left side. I-debit mo daw yung unearned rent. O, eh, kaya naka-debit. Ayun, oh. Debit. 75. Anong ka-partner ng unearned? Eh, di, ano pa iba? Eh, di yung rent income. 75,000. Ganun lang yun. Plus. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we derive sa satisfaction to some extent from the interaction with students. Yung mga simpleng pagtawa mo sa mga jokes namin, they mean something to us. They make us happy. But teaching in front of the camera is a different thing. We don't even know if you're there. We don't even know if you're listening. So a simple like dun sa ating video or a simple present sir, nandito po kami nakikinig, we are watching sir, will inspire us. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we know that you are there. But teaching in front of the camera is not merely sharing our content. It means sharing our time, our devotion, and above all, our passion. So, yung simpleng pag-subscribe mo sa amin, it lets us know that you are there and we are here to continue what we are doing. So, ngayon pa lang, nagpapasalamat na kami. Diyan sa yung subscription, uh, it inspires us. It, since it inspires me to wake up every morning, prepare discussion materials, and continue what I am doing. So, thank you so much. Please continue sharing and liking and subscribing. Thank you. Wag mo lang pagbabaliktaran. Tama? O, oh, yun yung sabi natin dito. Okay, tuloy na natin basahin. The unearned income is a real account being a liability. It becomes a mixed account. So, ang sabi dito, the liability account is over, kaya nga natin dinebit para mabawasan. And the income account is under, kaya natin credit. Okay, tingnan natin uli. Ayan, no? nakadebit yung liability, nakakredit naman yung income account. To correct this, sabi niya kanina, the adjusting entry to correct the account. So, it be debit liability, credit income account, tapos na tayo. Next, income 
income method. Under the income method, the total amount of cash received in advance is credited to an income account. It is initially credited to an income account. While the amount collected is not yet earned at the date of collection, eventually this will be earned. Yan naman ang katwiran niya. The credit to an income account is actually in anticipation that this will be earned later. So, just the same. The income account, which is classified as nominal account, becomes a mixed account, meaning to say partly real, partly nominal. Since income was credited at the date the cash was received, the income is overstated. The liability, and earned income is liability, is understated. Balik tayo, mga kapatid, dun sa ating illustration. On August 1, 2020, same lang, nangolekta in advance ng one year na krenta. August 1, 2020 to July 1, 2021. Income method. Kung sabi mo kanina sa liability method, ah, itong nakolekta ko ay utang, sabi mo, liability method. Under the income method naman, hindi, sabi mo, ah, income ko na to kaagad kasi eventually it will be earned. So, nangolekta ka, debit to cash, credit to rent income, 180,000. Again, this entry is without any fault as of August 1, 2020. Walang problema sa entry na yan. As of that date. Magkakaproblema lang tayo if and when until December 31, hindi mo siya i-correct. Kasi totoo ba na ang rent income mo noong December 31 ay 180 na? Hindi. Na-prove na natin kanina that only 75 out of the 180,000 is actually income. So, yun yung sinasabi kanina that the income is over and a liability is not yet recognized and therefore it is understated. Are you following? Hopefully, yung teacher mo sa college, ganito din kadetalyado mag-explain. Ang problema kasi, pagka hindi, okay, bala na kayo, magbasa kayo dyan. Tapos pagkatapos niya, mag-quiz tayo next meeting. Hmm, patay ka dyan. Kaya kailangan makikinig ka. You should find ways to help yourself. Ganon talaga. Kaya nga, ang katwira ng ibang mga teachers, ang tawag daw sa kanila, instructor, hindi teacher. Kasi their work is to instruct and konti lang yung teaching. Eh, kaya ayaw kong tawagin yung instructor eh. Mas gusto kong teacher because I want to teach. Ayan. Rent income is therefore over. Yan nga yung sinasabi kanina dito oh. Income is over and liability is under. That is why to correct that, di debit mo yung rent income. O di parehas din kanina. Gawa ka ng T-account. Under the income method, ang pangalan ng T-account ay rent income naman. Initially, okay, listen, nakakredit siya sa 180. O di 180. Ang patunayan na natin, ang income ay 75 lang pala. So, dapat sa pinakadulo nito, 75 lang. Para gawin mong 75 yung 180, kagawin mo. Babawasan mo, dadagdagan mo. E di natural, babawasan mo. Paano mo bawasan ang income? Di ni debit. Kasi ang normal balance ng income ay credit. Di debit mo na magkano? E di 105 naman. So, it becomes 75. Kaya 105 yung amount natin dito. 75 naman dito sa kabila. Are you following? Bawal malito. Huwag kang malilito. Bawal pagbaliktara. So, we are done with A, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yung T accounts sa pinapakita dito, tulad din yung, yung analysis natin kanina. Ginawan na natin sa kanina dito. We are down to our last two. B1 and B2. B1 is for accrual of of expenses. Expenses are normally recorded when paid. However, under the accrual basis of accounting, expenses should be recognized when incurred regardless of when payment was made. Correct. Expenses already incurred but not yet paid as of the end of the accounting period are called accrued expenses. Examples of accrued expenses are accrued salaries, accrued interest, accrued utilities expense, etc. Failure to record an expense because it is not yet paid results in an understatement of expenses, correct? And also understatement of the liability. The expense and the liability can be recognized by preparing an adjusting journal entry, debiting the expense account, and crediting the liability account. Illustration number one. Normally, interest on notes payable is paid together with the principal at the date of maturity. When the term of the note payable covers two or more accounting periods, the interest on such note must be allocated among the periods covered. Correct. At the end of the accounting period, the total interest already incurred during because of the note during the period is considered an interest expense. Such interest expense can be recognized by preparing an adjusting entry, debit 
interest expense credit to accrued interest payable. Example, at the end of the accounting period, December 31, 2020, ABC Company has a note payable for 100,000 issued and dated November 1, 2020. The note bears an interest rate of 12% and will mature on October 31, 2021. So, ibig sabihin yan, ito yung date of issue, ito yung date of maturity, ito yung principal amount, which is 100,000. Ang problema, yung note covers two periods. Apektado yung 2020 at saka yung 2021. So, for the year 2020, you have November and December. So, those two months, we must recognize the related interest expense that we have not yet paid, paid but already incurred. So, how do you compute for the interest? PRT. That is the formula. P times R times T. Principal times rate times the time. The principal is 100,000. Rate is 12%. The time involved for the year 2020 is 2 months only. So, 2 over 12. The interest related to 2020 should be 2,000. Adjusting journal entry. Debit. Interest expense. Credit. Accrued interest payable. Next, illustration number 2. Accrual of salaries naman. Normally, salaries are paid weekly, by weekly or on a monthly basis. When salaries are paid, these are recorded by a debit to salaries expense, correct, and a credit to cash if it is paid in cash. If the last payment of the salaries coincide with the end of the accounting period, walang problema pag exactong end ng accounting period. Ang problema nga lang pagka hindi. Example, ABC Company pays salaries of employees on a weekly basis. Salaries for 5 working days is 35,000 paid every Friday. So for one reason or another, you have to make financial statements. May 31, example, end of the month of May, 2020, at the end of the accounting period, falls on a Wednesday. O, ano mangyayari? Anong i-include mo sa May 31, which is a Wednesday? Kailangan include mo lahat ng mga salary expenses mo, although not yet paid. Paano yun? The accrued salaries for three days. Kasi 5 working days. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Ito mapat, Wednesday eh. Kailangan mo nang gumawa. So, kalagitnaan, Wednesday. So, hanggang Wednesday, may 3 days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That must be recognized although it is not yet paid. Ganun yun. So, 3 over 5 times 35, 21 is accrued salaries. Incurred but not yet paid. Debit, salaries expense, 21,000. Credit, accrued salaries payable, 21,000. We are done with B1. Finally, B2. Adjustment for accrual of income. Normally, income is recorded upon collection. Normally. However, under the accrual basis of accounting, income must be recognized when earned, regardless of when collection is made. That is why, receivables when billed are already considered as income, although they are not yet collected under accrual basis of accounting. Accrued income is an income already earned but not yet collected. This is not yet recorded in the books. Accrued income can be recorded in the books by preparing an adjusting entry by debit to accrued income receivable account and credit to the income account. So say for example, at the end of the accounting period, December 31, 2020, ABC Company has a note receivable naman from BA Enterprises. Kanina notes payable. So yung kalakip na interest nun, interest expense. Tayo yung nangutang, tayo yung magbabayad ng interest. Notes payable. E dito, tayo yung may receivable, yung kalakip naman na interest nito would be interest receivable. Tayo yung babayaran. E ang kaso rito, babayaran tayo kasama nung principal. The face value of the note is 120,000. September 1, 2020 will mature on August 31, 2021. Again, two periods are affected. Year 2021 and year 2020. Okay, so for year 2020, you have September, October, November, December. 4 out of 12 months. The interest has already been earned although it will be paid together with the principal. The adjusting entry to record the accrued interest on notes receivable will be principal times rate times time which is 4 months. 4,000. Remember the adjusting journal entry. Debit. Accrued interest receivable. Credit. Interest income. Amount 4,000. Okay class, so that's the bell already. That's it for this meeting. Uh, so, ganun-ganun lang class. 
a few minutes of your time every day, imbis na kung ano-ano yung pinapanood mo, just make it a habit to watch our videos pa bilang tulong na rin dun sa sarili mong pag-aaral. Why? Kasi tatandaan mo, hindi lahat ng nababasa mo ng mag-isa ay maririnig mo. At hindi din lahat ng mga naririnig mo ay mababasa mo. Tulungan yan. So with that, see you in our next meeting. See you in the next lesson.